Hey everyone, I'm glad that you're here because I am super excited to be able to show you this drone, which has quickly become one of my personal favorites. Uh, it's fast, it's quiet, it's efficient, and the acrobatic ability of this drone is simply incredible. Um, there's nothing like it. This is a new class all to its own. The thing that makes it so special is that it has three inch props and yet it weighs very, very little. I've built mine to be 33.5 grams dry weight. And as far as I've seen, that makes it the lightest three inch drone anywhere in the world today. Um, if you've got one that's lighter, that's awesome. I'd love to see it. But this is what I came up with and I absolutely love it. Even with a battery, it's still only like 46 grams and it gets three to six minutes of flight time. Oh yeah, did I mention this runs on one cell batteries? I know, it's hard to believe that a 1S drone can have the performance of this one, but you're about to see it for yourself. Uh, now this frame is the baby tooth designed by Kebab FPV. All the rest of the parts, if you wanna see that, it's listed down in the video description. And if you wanna see how I made mine so light and how I think it compares to some other builds, stick around, that'll be later in the video. But first, you gotta see what this can do. So I'm gonna show you some flight footage that I recorded just the other day working from home I took a break at lunchtime and went and flew out in my own backyard and I have flown a lot of different drones and there is no drone of any size that can maneuver around my backyard like this one can. Um, it's super fun for that kind of space. Check it out. So now let's talk about how this drone compares to some others that you may have seen already. Uh, the closest comparison has got to be this one. This is the Beta FPV HX100 SE. It's a 29 gram toothpick. It also runs on 1S. Uh, this thing is amazing. I still love this build. Check out those videos if you haven't seen them already. Uh, but the things that I love about this build are the same things that I love about this 3 inch. 
Uh, they're both super quiet. They're both very efficient. They're both very agile. Um, the three inch is just kind of the next evolution of that idea. I built mine especially light, so it's just a few grams heavier, and yet it has three inch props, uh, which just makes it more awesome. Here you can see mine up close. Now again, this frame is called the Baby Tooth. It was designed by Bob Rugi, that's Kebab FPV. Um, he came up with these motors and this basic setup as well. So you could follow his formula and I'm sure that would be great. But I also made a few customizations of my own to make this one so light. And on a build like this, every single gram matters. And this build is five to 10 grams lighter uh, than what some other people are flying on this same kind of setup. And so I think that makes a big difference. I'll show you how I did that. So let's go over the parts, the props, the batteries, the tune, and how to get the weight down. First of all, the frame does come in multiple thickness options. This is the two millimeter version that I started with, and then I switched to this one. This is a one and a half millimeter plate, and so that saved about a gram on the build, which is great. Um, I guess there's a little bit more chance of it breaking now, although I don't really think so because there's so little momentum going into a crash. At least I've had no problems so far. It also flexes just a little bit more than the two millimeter version, and that also hasn't been a problem, again, because it's so light. The motors are from FPV Cycle, and the size is 1202.5. They're 11,500 kV with a two millimeter shaft. The flight controller is a Beta FPV F4 1S board. This is the B-Brain V2 Canopy made by Newbie Drone, and this is the Runcam Nano 3 camera. The Nano 3 camera actually fits really nicely in one of these canopies. All you've got to do is take the outsides and kind of bend them outwards like this just a little bit, and then it pushes in nice and snug. And then you can remove some of this extra material. You don't have to have that much sticking out from the camera. So you can see on this one, I just left a little bit on top. And this rubber band here is to help hold my FPV antenna. Sandwiched in between and wrapped in just a little bit of kept on tape is the video transmitter. That's a nameless RC Nano. And that goes up to 400 milliwatt if you want to. This flight controller comes with these blue and white wires. And that is actually 22 gauge wire. I replaced that with 20 gauge wire, which is this black wire that you can see. And I've still got a BT 2.0 connector on the back. And there's a little tiny zip tie here that gives tension relief so nothing can yank on the flight controller. So let's talk about batteries and connectors for just a minute. I've been flying the GNB 450 milliamp hour. This is ADC high voltage, and I've got a BT 2.0 connector on it. It doesn't come with these connectors. I have to change it. And if you're wondering how to do that safely, I already made a video about that. Now, when Bob Ruge was first developing this quad, I remember talking to him about it and he was really excited about this new connector because it's so much better than PH2 for a build like this. This takes more amps than like a Whoop or something like that. And so this connector definitely helped. Uh, but then he went and tested um, XT30 and found that it had even better performance. So this is kind of the recommended thing uh, for this setup and you can get these batteries on his website. But I decided to try BT2 anyway. Um, and the reason is XT30 is really kind of overkill. This build never pulls 30 amps. Um, it very rarely pulls even half of that, I think. And so this might be a little bit underkill. This is definitely overkill. And so is this good enough? Um, I don't know. I suspect that the XT30 would have an advantage, like he said. But if it does, it's only on the upper end of the throttle. And the way that I fly this build is not screaming around on full throttle all the time. In fact, I only use full throttle in just little bursts. So at the speeds I typically fly this, the BT 2.0 connector is certainly fine. The footage that you saw was with this connector. And I appreciate the fact that it is smaller uh, physical dimensions and also lighter. When I fly with one of these batteries, I typically get at least three minutes of really hard flying, more if I fly gentle. One time I cruised around just really gently to see what would happen and I got five minutes and 50 seconds. And so that's pretty sweet. Although the power requirements of mine might be a little bit lower than usual because of the low weight. For a little bit longer flight time, you could bump up to this 520. This is also a great battery. Um, and then there's the 600, although I really don't recommend the 600. I find that the 600 doesn't give me any more flight time than the 520. Um, I think the 520 is just a higher quality battery. The way I am mounting the battery is with three rubber bands like this. You can see I've got them here and they kind of stretch between the posts. And these are actually surprisingly tight. I haven't even added a sticky pad on here yet. I might do that in the future, but uh, this is tight enough. I've actually just been flying it like that. The battery goes in kind of sideways like this. And there's two reasons why I'm doing that. One is that in a forward crash, this is less likely to move because it's not gonna slide forward. And the other reason has to do with the length of this power lead and over here, it just reaches under like this and makes just the perfect length between these two. And since the wire has to cross under the arm, there's no way it can come up and get caught in the props. Now, these motors have a two millimeter shaft, not the typical 1.5, and so that's gonna limit what props 
you can use on these motors, but there's only a few props that are worth considering anyway, and the two main ones are right here. They're both by GemFan. This is a 3018 prop, two blade, and a 3016. I've talked about both of these on my channel before, and these are fantastic props. They're both very light, very smooth. Um, this one has a little bit lower pitch. This one has one fewer blades, but a little bit more pitch. So I've been flying this two blade prop, as you can see. Um, I like this prop because it's a little bit lighter than the three blade version, and it has a little bit more pitch, which means it produces thrust at a little bit lower RPMs, which makes it even quieter. They're both very quiet, but I think this two blade is even a little bit quieter, and I think it produces a little bit more thrust on the low end. Uh, the downside of using this two blade prop is that the increased pitch on it actually, I think, draws more current than the 3016 when you're on high throttle. So if you're going to rip around a lot at higher speeds, I would go with the lower pitch prop. This will give you more voltage sag at the high throttle than this one. That's my experience anyway. I'd suggest you pick up some of each, try them both, and see what you like better. An advantage of the 2mm shaft is I think it's going to be more durable, and it definitely produces more contact with the prop, and that means that these props do not slip at all, even without uh, prop screws. You can just push them on and they are plenty snug like that. Each motor, as you can see, is held on by just two screws, and the motors come with steel screws, but I replaced them with these button cap titanium screws. That's titanium M2 by four, and that saves quite a bit of weight, although honestly, even just a button cap steel would weigh less than the ones that are included. I know you're gonna ask me where to get these M2 titanium screws. Unfortunately, they're kind of hard to find. If I find a new source for them, I'll post a link down below. I also replaced the screws for the canopy. These white screws that you see are made of Rennie. Rennie is a composite of fiberglass and nylon. It's a lot stronger than regular nylon screws, and I sometimes use Rennie for whoop motor screws to save weight, uh, but it helps a lot here too as well. These M2 screws go through, and then you can just kind of cut them to whatever length you need. Now, Rennie obviously is not going to be as strong as steel or titanium, but I think it's going to be good enough in this case because this build is so light. It has so little momentum. I'd be really surprised if these break. Um, and also, the canopy is flexible. It's going to take a little bit of the impact, and this whole stack right here is all rubber grommets and so the whole thing compresses so I don't think it's actually going to focus the force in a way that would break these screws and it saves some weight. Now when mounting the flight controller there's a couple things to consider. First of all the USB connector is going to have to point up because if it went down it would hit the frame. That means the whole flight controller is going to be upside down and in beta flight you're going to roll the board orientation 180 degrees and then remap the motors to be in the correct places. Having the plugs pointing upward is going to make it hard to use some whoop canopies, but this B-Brain canopy actually works pretty well because with a very minor stretch, it can actually go on the outside of the plugs, and these fit in here even with the wires as long as you tuck the wires down nice and neat. That's how I had my build set up at first, but then later I decided to remove these plugs to save even a little bit more weight. Removing the plugs is not something I generally recommend to just anyone. You have to do it very carefully. There's tiny capacitors right next to these plugs, and they're easy to knock out of place, and also it's just a fair amount of work. And so that's usually the last thing that I do and the last thing that I recommend. But in this case, I wanted to get as much weight off as possible. And so that is something that I chose to do. Removing the plugs from the flight controller and from the motor wires saved a total of 0.6 grams. And I did leave a little bit of slack like I always do for service. And so they come in and attach on here. Now, if you want to get the maximum range out of a board like this, you'll want to get the no RX version. So you can connect an external receiver, even crossfire. A lot of people are doing that with the little mini Immortal T antennas. And so that is an option. However, I have one with a built-in receiver because again, I was going for low weight and I had some of these available anyway. If it has a built-in receiver, you'll also notice that the antenna wire is now on the bottom, which is no good. Um, it's pretty easy to desolder this antenna and just stick it right back in again in the hole on the other side, and you can do that, and then just have it kind of come up around the canopy. But since I was going to have to do that, I thought I'd take it one step further, and I actually replaced it with a custom antenna. You can see this black wire coming out here all the way to the end. The active element on the end is exactly the same length as you would see on an XM or something like that, uh, because I'm running FR Sky. But I've got it plugged in right here, and this little white wire is the grounding. So I guess I added a little bit of weight by putting a custom antenna and this little zip tie, but I think it's totally worth it compared to the little red wire that comes on these. And the way that I build it is I have these SMA to UFL extensions. They're really light and all you have to do is cut to the right length and expose the correct amount of the active element. I did the same thing with the 5.8 gigahertz video. You can see the antenna is connected here with UFL and it just runs up like this, and this runs up right behind the back of the canopy. So what would I do next? Uh, how would I make it even lighter? And I guess the answer is not very much, or I would have already done it. 
One thing I do wish is I wish that these props could be even lighter. The material I think is stiffer than it needs to be for the low weight of this drone. There's a lot of material in the hub because it's designed for screws. If we had a prop that was designed exclusively for push on with a two millimeter shaft, then it could be a lot lighter and respond better. And that would be a cool thing to see. And it's also possible to use a lighter canopy. Um, most whoop canopies are actually lighter than this B-Brain canopy, but I'm gonna leave this one on here because it is super, super tough. And with the low weight of this drone, I think this canopy is gonna be just about indestructible. You might be wondering how it compares to my Shutterbug 85 design. This is another type of drone that I fly a lot. It's an 85 millimeter 2S Whoop, and you've probably seen these on my channel. I've been flying these for over a year, and these are also super fun, and I fly them in a lot of the same kind of places. Uh, playgrounds, backyard, um, small parks, and we also use these for racing, which is super fun. The thing I appreciate about the Whoop frame is the fact that it can hit gates, it can hit trees, almost always recover in the air, or push leaves and branches out of the way. It can even land in the grass upside down and turtle and take Take off and go. So when I fly these, my flight almost always ends with the drone coming all the way back to me and I put in a new pack and take off again. And that is something I really appreciate about this. But when it comes to just sheer flight performance, there's really no comparison. The larger props and the lighter design like this uh, is just pretty amazing. Now this drone is not the most powerful. Of course, I have lots of drones that are faster than this, but they're also heavier than this. And the thing that I want to point out is that those faster, uh, more powerful, heavier drones, those can be super fun. Like I enjoy flying five inch drones as well, but you need to go somewhere special to fly those. You need to have enough room and get far enough away from people. But if you can shrink down the size and lower the weight like this, then you can still have a lot of those big acro moments, just scale it down into a smaller space, closer to people and that sort of thing. And for me, that opens up opportunities. So thanks for watching. I certainly enjoy being able to share the things that I love with all of you. So I hope this has inspired you to get out there and fly or get on the bench and build something lighter than you ever have before so you can experience this for yourself. Thanks for watching. Be safe out there. I'll see you next time.